you have a better chance of becoming a starter in the NBA than becoming a professional artist that is successful. You have a better chance of becoming MLB, NBA, NFL player than becoming a professional artist. But for me, I felt like I was at a pro level, so I really feel confident as being like, I'm ready to be amongst those other great artists. Still be building, still be getting better. I'll still be striving for like much bigger masterworks and much more evolved and maybe even have like apprentices helping me with single piece to strive to get something that's so vast. I mean, something to do like that, that's capable of being in a museum. Not just a great gallery. A good gallery is the beginning. Great gallery, that's your standpoint. A museum, that's like next level. If you get there and people really truly understand it, then that's it, man. You're in history, you're in the books. I just want to affect people in a positive way. I want to, I want to enhance their life. You know, the art on your walls is going to totally enhance your life on a daily basis. For the most part, I just had to learn through trial and error, man. And that's why it's taken some time for me to actually get to the point where I'm selling work consistently, where I'm showing work consistently. Uh, in the beginning, it was tough. It was just nothing. There was no sales, there was no shows, there was no nothing. It was just producing good work and seeing no gains. He had a problem yeah, with a, a roommate earlier in his, in his life where he didn't, he didn't really understand it. And he wasn't a bad guy, but we didn't see eye to eye on the art stuff. And it just literally, physically, mentally hurt and my this career. Is but the bottom line, and what we're discussing in our lives, is that look, we're good at what we do. The fact of the matter is, is that there's taxes to pay, there's rent, there's bills, this and that. If we can make a living off of producing wonderful, high quality art in, through the right galleries, and we can get paid, then we're gonna fucking do it. Then we're gonna fucking do it. Expectations prior was like, I wasn't planning on selling work opening night. Hopefully, we get some sales over the duration of the show. But I expect there to be a lot of people there. It was packed. It was brick. You could not walk. Honestly, my parents wouldn't have joined it because they wouldn't be able to walk. It's like claustrophobia. You know what I mean? Like it was wild. We ended up selling 18 pieces on opening night. I mean, it's even hard to talk about, but I had a gentleman, a client, that I thought was interested in, in uh, investing in work. Uh, one of my art consultants contacted me about this guy, said, you know, I'm dating this guy. He wants to get into the art world. He wants to start collecting. He wants to start investing. I was like, all right, great, you know, blah, blah, blah. She thought of me. She reached out. We spoke. Let's set up a meeting where he can come and view the work. I said, wonderful. So in my head, I'm thinking, oh, great. 
you know, hopefully he sees this work as an investment. Hopefully he comes over and spends like a bunch of money and invests in my work and he'll see his return over a set amount of years and everything's gravy. And it didn't go that way at all. It was totally different from any other visit I've ever had. And I've had a ton of studio visits by this point. So he came over, he wasn't interested in buying work. He wasn't interested in collecting work. He was like, I'm not gonna cut you a check. I'm not gonna have you package your stuff up. That's not my intent. And immediately I've told a couple people this. I was like, my heart sank. Art is a difficult thing to invest in. It is, it is definitely when, risky. Especially when somebody is not full blown established. Established, totally. They don't have a big name. They have They're great work, but they don't have a big name. When I went to school, I was always right. taught that it was always painters that were dead for 200 years making millions upon millions and upon millions of dollars. Maybe. Did I want to paint for the rest of my life for my grandkids, grandkids, grandkids? To be to rich. To yeah. be rich. What sense does that no. make? What, no, what sense does that make? Stupid. Nothing. Amazing. Until I met Tim. I thought he was a joke. He proved me wrong. He sold some paintings. I, I didn't go to his first show in Morristown. That was the one show that he had when I knew him that I'd never been to. Every other show I've been to of his, and he's always produced. All those sports that were individual sports, like we did all the team sports, and then all our whole crew started to break away, and then we were skateboarding and snowboarding and surfing and rollerblading and doing all these things that were just individual sports where you're pushing yourself every day to see what tricks you could do, how big you could go, like how much you could progress. And honestly, man, even those types of sports really draws back to who I am as an artist these days because in the back in the day, when it was time to go in and have hot cocoa and be by the fire, like I was still out there trying to land a frontside 540 on my snowboard. When it was time to come in and have dinner in the summertime, like I was out there practicing nollie kickflips. Like how do I land a nollie kickflip? Like I was the first one out and the last one in. And I think that's a testament and honestly very like consistent with the way I am as an artist, which is just, relentless like I whatever it takes I'm going to do that whatever it takes I don't care what it takes I'm gonna find a way to get better than most other people at it